Hi guys, it's Justin. Today I'm going to try to explain you the linear quadratic model. I know it's not that simple, so I will try to make things as simple as possible. The idea behind this model is to quantify how many cells are killed when radiation is delivered. Whether it's a normal tissue or a tumor, it doesn't matter right now. In this model, you have two different ways of killing. The first one is the alpha killing. The alpha killing is when you deliver radiation and I don't know, it touched something really, really important and your cell is instantly dead. There, are, there is no second chance, no possible second chance, no way of repairing itself. Here you've got a boxing analogy. So like I said, alpha killing is um, the first way of killing is like a massive knockout punch. Radiation delivers a powerful, well-placed hit that knocks the cell out instantly. The cell is immediately destroyed. It's what we will call a clean knockout, just like in boxing when one strong punch is enough to knock the opponent out immediately. Now, let's talk about the second way of cell killing, which is called the beta killing. The beta killing is when you have an accumulation of subletal damages that eventually leads to the death of the cell. Subletal damages are small individual hits that wouldn't, that taken separately wouldn't uh, have caused much harm, but taken together, uh, they can lead to the death of the cell. Let's go back to our boxing analogy. It's like um, in a boxing match uh, that when the boxer doesn't um, have a massive big punch uh, in the face that knocks him out instantly. This is the alpha killing, like I said, but here in this case, our boxer receives a series of blows, let's say a jab in the nose, a hook in the liver, another body shot, and each of these punches taken separately wouldn't uh, wouldn't have knocked him out, uh, but because of all these previous hits, even one small punch, one more punch can become lethal and can knock him out just because of an accumulation of all these damages. But if all these damages had been given one on Monday, another one on Tuesday, another one on Thursday. This is not the same because the damages are spread out. So the boxer had time to recover in between. And so this is not the same. This is exactly the same for the cell. This is the beta killing, the effect of accumulated subletal sub hits, sorry, delivered too close together uh, for the cell to repair itself. This is why we say that 20 gray is not equal to 20 gray in radiotherapy. Uh, what does this clearly mean? This means that if I decide to give 20 gray on Monday, for example, in one session, in one fraction, this is, this is much more harmful than if I decide to give one gray um, each day for 20 days. Uh, all the damages are spread out and so this is very 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 less harmful to give it in 20 days than than if um, if i compare to giving 20 gray in one single fraction this is very very harmful we've just talked about the two different mechanisms of cell killing but now um, we will have to calculate the probability of each component to happen and then we will just add the alpha killing and the beta killing and so we will be able to predict the number of cells that will be killed when you will deliver radiation. So first the alpha killing, what is the probability of getting a knockout punch, a massive knockout punch for each uh, round? it is exactly the same for each round. Let's say in this example, 3%. Of course, the, this kind of knockout doesn't depend on fatigue or on previous damage. This is, this is all about the timing and precision. And so this can happen 
really at the very first bunch to the very last bunch. So important, the alpha killing, the probability of alpha killing is always the same from the round 1 to the round 6 to the round 18, if there are 18 rounds, doesn't matter. But you have to keep in mind that uh, a clean knockout is always possible with the same probability. So this is just about timing and precision, like in a boxing game. So it doesn't depend on how exhausted you are. So even in the, 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 first, the very first round, you can uh, have a clean knockout. Okay, this is exactly the same as for the cell killing. So the alpha killing is uh, there. There is always the same probability, and of course, this is completely different for the beta killing, um, and you will understand it easily. Of course, uh, he is the boxer is completely exhausted at round six, and you even more at round higher than than six. So. Uh, the probability of cumulative damage and knockout increases with rounds, of course. Uh, the, as the rounds go on, the boxer takes more hits, he's more exhausted, and so uh, there are the, the probability of knockout increases with uh, increases round by round. Now, let's add the two components together. You can clearly see that uh, at the beginning of the match, round 1, round 2, round 3, there are a more probability of knockout with alpha killing, with the, with the massive punch, the clean knockout, the massive punch in the face, the right place. And later on, uh, after the round 4, uh, you have more probability of accumulating damages. So the, the boxer is totally exhausted always. Um, and uh, it becomes weaker and weaker and then the probability of beta killing is higher after round 4. And at round 4, this is the moment when you have the same probability of alpha than beta killing. This is the, the, right, the right place, the moment when you have exactly the same probability of each knockout to happen. And this is called the alpha-beta ratio. Um, here we are in radiobiology, so we will not talk about rounds, but about gray. So at four gray, when you give four gray, you have the same amount of death with alpha killing than with beta killing. This is important because you will see that each tumor uh, has its own alpha beta ratio. For example 10 or 3 or 1.5 and you will see that later but what you need to keep in mind is that under the alpha beta ratio so in this case 4 gray under 4 gray the alpha component is major is is the the major part of the of the killing mechanisms and after 4 gray more than 4 gray the beta killing is more important than the alpha killing. So here we've got the, the real thing, the real graphs. You can see that the alpha killing is linear. As I said before, 3% probability of massive knockout punch, but this is completely linear. The probability is the same from the round one to the round um, 18, for example, but this is clearly not the same for the beta killing, which is quadratic. What does this mean? This means that um, this is the, 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 the probability of uh, beta killing is proportional to the dose squared. So this is really, this becomes really massive when you increase the dose. Um, the alpha beta here in this example is equal to three. What does this mean? This means that at 3 gray, you have the same probability of alpha killing than of beta killing. We can also say that uh, at this dose, the contributions from alpha and beta are equal. And so you have the same amount of cell death from both mechanisms as it is written here. 
important. Uh, if you want to spare an organ, you will give those lower than the alpha and beta. For example, here you have three gray for your alpha beta. Below three gray, the beta effect is minimal. And as I said before, when you give more than three gray, when the alpha beta ratio is three gray, more than three gray becomes really massive with a lot of damage because it becomes quadratic before it's more the alpha part the alpha component which is um, the major part of the cell killing and so you give less than three gray if you want to spare an organ but if you want to kill something for example a tumor you will try to give more than the alpha beta ratio of the tumor for example if the tumor has an alpha beta of three gray you will try to give for example, five gray or six gray or even more to have uh, the beta component to kill with the quadratic part, which is really massive to kill a maximum of cells. Now let's talk about three different type of tissues. The first one, the prostate, prostate cancer, for example, the prostate has a very low alpha beta ratio, 1.5 gray here. Uh, you can see that the boxer is quite weak at the beginning. Uh, the lung, the, the, the central nervous system, the bowel, so the, the normal tissue in general has a very low alpha beta ratio, 3 gray. And a lung cancer, a head and neck cancer has a high alpha beta ratio of around 10 gray. So let's talk here about the treatment of lung cancer. Uh, you have, of course, your cancer with a high alpha beta ratio, 10 gray. This is the lung cancer, but around the cancer, you have normal lung tissue that you want to spare. Um, he ha it has uh, an alpha beta ratio of three, 3 gray, so the normal lung tissue, 3 gray, and the lung cancer, 10 gray. The first idea that you could uh, have is I would like to destroy this cancer let's give it more than three gray every day of course you will destroy your cancer but keep in mind that you have organ at risk around it you have um, your lung your normal lung with an alpha beta of three gray so if you give more than 10 gray per fraction every day all of this tissue will have massive will get massive damages because of the beta killing the, the beta part so we are higher much much higher than three gray so this will be completely destroyed by uh, destroyed by the beta killing so in this part to try to spare maximum of normal uh, lung tissue we will uh, give less than three gray in uh, for example in the in the case of the lung cancer we give two gray per fraction in the case of the prostate cancer, this is clearly different. You have uh, always organ at risks uh, with alpha beta ratio of three gray. So this is the rectum and the sigmoid. They have a low alpha beta ratio of three gray. And uh, the prostate cancer has a very, very, very low alpha beta ratio of 1.5 gray. The idea is to give massive damage to the prostate so i can cure of course the patient without uh, giving massive damage to the organ at risk how to do that if i give more than 1.5 gray per fraction but less than 3 gray per fraction i will hit i will give beta killing so uh, more than the alpha beta of the prostate cancer so this will be massive quadratic uh, damages to the prostate but i will still be in the linear part for the uh, organ at risk so very lower damages for the organ at risk if i keep uh, the dose under the three gray so basically if i give three gray per fraction i will uh, destroy the prostate and spare my organ at risk so i won't give more than three gray because if i give more than three gray you are above the alpha beta ratio of the organ at risk and 
you want to spare them so you don't want to go to the quadratic part the beta part the beta killing part in your organet risks this is the same rule as for the lung uh, so you stay below 3 gray but you give more than 1.5 gray and so uh, this is really destroying the prostate take home messages uh, there are two different ways of cell killing the first one is the alpha killing the alpha killing is one big punch a massive punch knockout um, and the beta killing is accumulating sublethal damage so uh, one one jab one punch in the liver another body shot and uh, you are completely exhausted and then even one small punch can knocks you out you are completely exhausted and you have to know that the probability of alpha killing is linear and the beta killing is quadratic so this is really massive the, the quadratic part is really massive if you go higher than the alpha beta ratio the alpha beta ratio is the dose required to have the same number of alpha and beta killing so if you give more than this dose you will give major damages um, the alpha beta ratio is different uh, for uh, each tissue 1.5 for the prostate then for head and neck cancer and lung cancer and three for normal tissue if you want to kill to kill give more than uh, the alpha beta ratio each day for example uh, three gray per fraction for the prostate cancer but if you want to spare, you have to give less than the alpha beta ratios. I hope this video was helpful. See you next time for another one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you next time. Bye.